we've run straight out here, but it gone through so quickly. Really deadly silent, you couldn't hear anything. No, it was eerily silent. You could just hear the crackling of the fire. We started early on, the horses in the shed, there was no hope of getting them out at the time. It was so, such a savage fire. I checked every field I could, I was, it was pitch black, couldn't see anything, so I was running around every field calling, seeing if it, there was anything, if they would come running or anything. Got home at around half past two in the morning, had about 20 minutes sleep, and got back down the aisle about eight o'clock the next morning to find out that, you know, well I've gone. Over 60 horses and their riders came from all parts of the country to commemorate the upcoming second year anniversary of the fire at Elmwood Equestrian Centre. For 30 years, Elmwood has been a pillar of the Essex rural and equestrian community. Every day people come to tend to their horses while others come down for horse riding lessons. It's also a regular host of competitions of dressage, equestrian and show jumping. But above all else, this is a strong community with a sense of family and they all share one thing in common, a love for these beautiful creatures. We, we started Elmwood a bit of an accident about 33 years ago. Maldon District Council asked us if we would ride, do a ride in school to get people out in the country. That's how we started. Um, and we've been going ever since. People growing up here, you'll get people who've been here since they were kids and they've got their own kids, their own kids were up here. So it's just a re evolving business really all the time. This is the site where 12 horses and a cat lost their lives to the horrific blaze. It was an incident which traumatised and devastated the Essex rural farming and equestrian community. Anne Hull and David Shaw have lived and maintained the farm for over 30 years. Yep, two years already, been gone. All wooden structure, cow sheds, history gone. They put a site like this now. But one day it can come up from the ashes. There was, there was quite a few stables in this bit, but luckily there was only 12 horses that night. Um, the, this was my, we called the, the teenage block, where all the children used to go when they were teenagers, and, and their parents, of course, but um, when they knew what they were doing and from the main yard. They loved it. They used to paint the stables the colours that they wanted. Um, yeah, they really had a good time. And, but, you know, they've all come together. Bed. It was about 10, 11 o'clock at night, got a phone call. Is that fire you? Came from Jeremy French, farm across the field. Looked out the window, see this glow, and me and Anne left, only ones in the house at the time, we left the house, came across it, see the signs of devastation that was happening over here. We was the first uh, liveries down here, and I just screamed, ran out of the car, and just nothing I could do. The firemen were already here, they just stopped us going anywhere, and then that's when I rang. Grace to let her know and she didn't believe me, she just thought I was joking or something. So then I was like, no, you can be as serious as you need to come down now. Well, I just looked up into the sky and although it was pitch black, it was a clear night, you could just see all the smoke and the orange glare from the fire. It was horrendous, it was lots of smoke as well, I think it was the smoke that must have um, killed all the horses. It just, yeah.
Club members and passers-by tried desperately to free the horses that were trapped in the burning stables. The horses at the front of the stables had no chance of escaping. And the roof had dropped on top of what was left. The police wanted to do their forensics along with the fire brigade, so it was a slow job to remove the roof section by section so it didn't disturb what was underneath it. How were you able to identify the horses? Just keep tell me what that was like. Horses, you knew which were in which stable, basically. Um, a few markings left on them. It was quite horrific, really. It wasn't nice, not, not a nice sight, but just to go through with it. But I lost everything, so saddles, everything, and then obviously I lost Rex as well, so, yeah. Farm a couple of times with her, um, competed in the 75 class and the 85 class, so like 85 centimetres, about two foot six, I think. The 75 is about two foot three. It was pointless because we always had the first or second pole down in the show jumping round because she just used to run. Um, but the best thing I've ever gotten with her was a second place um, at Brook Farm in a combined training where you do a dressage test and then you do a show jumping course. My friend Abby beat me by one point and to this day I would never let her live it down. <laughs> <laughs> so he'd done everything, he took me on my first road hack really. First hacks, first sponsored rides, first shows. Sometimes he'd jump, sometimes he wouldn't. Sometimes he'd move, he'd pretend he was lame but he wasn't. So he was just, a, just a special horse to be honest. <laughs> Police and the forensic teams came to investigate. It soon became apparent that the circumstances of the fire were of a more sinister nature. The assailants avoided detection by hiding in the darkness and running through the fields. A camera at the rear of the barn was also covered up. The assailants are yet to be found. The police and fire investigators both decided because the camera had been covered and thought that some the light stepped up inside the shed from there the fire, that that was the reason for it. But it leaves a bit of taste to you. The story of this charming farm, struck down by tragedy, touched the nation, with donations coming from as far as Dubai and New York. They donated enough money so each person that had a horse die um, had £3,000 each. Amazing, all the donations, I think the furthest we got some from was Dubai. They got sent over to Newmarket. Everyone around here just gave us loads of stuff. The Essex horse. The Pioneer Protection Society gave us a lot as well. So have the uh, Memorial Horse Ride this Sunday as well. Yes, Approximately yep. 70 horses, I believe. It's going to be absolute chaos, isn't it? No, I don't know. <laughs> I think there might be even more. Don't tell the girls. <laughs> <laughs> Me, Beth and Kira were down at the seawall in Burnham um, about seven months after the fire. and We were just kind of sitting there having a little chat and we all kind of said we want to do something. We don't want to just sit and let it go by like another day and we all said well, why don't we try and organise a Friday then and it kind of started out as an idea and then it actually happened so and it went better than we could have imagined last year They, the two young ladies got special awards last year uh, for actually arranging it and I'm so glad and I hope this is going to be an annual event because let's not forget what's at stake here. Twelve horses were lost, far too many, and it was very, very traumatic for lots of people in the town. Very tragic incident. Um, it's affected the equestrian community, not just locally but also across the whole UK really. So it's a very tragic incident that people have lost their loved horses in, in what's going on. Uh, we're after any, any witnesses, anyone that believes they've got a piece of information and contact Essex Police and we'll look into that information for them to try and track down um, what's happened um, two years ago. I think it still comes back to haunt you, it's still fresh, the site is still there where it happened, although it's cleared. Keeping it fresh in people's ideas because one day we might get the answer. It's weird because some days it feels like we never even had them, to be honest. It feels like that part of your life just never existed because they were just taken so quick. And then other days it just hits you, like it's just like a wave, you don't even see it coming and then one thing just triggers you and you're off, you're just crying. Um, Yes, that's fun. Uh, but you'll never forget them. I mean, they're buried here now, so uh, nobody. Ever, I never forget, it, and I've got Grace still. So 
kind of a reminder because Grace and Rachel are kind of like best friends, so she lost her best friend as well as me. Even though the horrific memories of the fire continue to linger, this is a strong and resilient community who have been there for each other during the hard times. Even though it has been two years since the fire happened, nobody has yet been brought to justice. What this small community wants is answers. Answers as to why this person did this and who is responsible. Only then will Elmwood be able to move on from this horrific event. One day it'll happen, somebody'll say something. But until then we have to wait.